And with that, we now would like to go ahead and just kind of close out with the event uh, to talk a little bit more with some of the piece that Justin talked about on how do we go from here, where do we start. You know, the pandemic, as we look at, um, certainly put a pause on a number of you all as providers and your growth plans or operational plans and other different types of plans that, you know, we heard a lot over the course of the last two days about some of the pressures, the benefits with the growing demographics and others. And so, you know, the question becomes, what is it that we need to do coming out of here? What are one of those small steps? Just as Captain Hart had indicated, sometimes that the longest path around is the shortest path. And so, for one of those different components and what is we would look at and say, you know, what are one of those actions that you can take coming out of the Greystone event with your organization is to really look at and say, how do we reevaluate and determine is our strategic plan that we have, because COVID certainly did impact a number of you all as providers and need and may result in you needing to reevaluate that strategic plan. So as you go back, meet with your boards, your strategic leadership teams, management teams, and other key stakeholders, I want to spend a little bit of time because as Greystone has approached the strategic planning process that we found it's less so about looking at your mission, mission, vision, and other types of aspects, but it's really trying to drive consensus among the organization on whether we're on the right path currently, do we need to make pivots and adjustments to that, and really the best way to drive towards a consensus among all the key stakeholders is to look at and ask some of the you know, hard questions. And so I want to share with you a little bit over the course of the next 10 minutes or so, what are some of those questions that we found have been beneficial to help drive some of that thought process among the boards and leadership teams? You know, the first is to look at and say, how do we define and measure success? You know, as organizations that the all, we all have goals and aspirations, but making sure that there's a consistency and a concurrence among all of the different individuals about how do we look at and measure success is going to make sure that as you look at and embark upon your strategic plans and look at growth options, that you're going to be able to have the best opportunity that everyone is going to be able to be on board and move forward with that without questioning, you know, are we looking down the right path? So having that conversation among all of the key individuals to say, how would we measure success? Some of that may be growth in the number of individuals and lives that you serve. Some might measure success based upon an improvement in financial performance. For each organization, that definition of success is going to be different, but asking that question will help to identify what are those right filters as we look at opportunities and different areas, how to be able to measure that. You know, a second question is whether or not we have the appropriate scale, resources, and competitive advantages to compete. You know, Stuart and Christie talked earlier yesterday about why is it that we need to grow and some of the rationale for growth, whether it be for recruitment and retention of key talent and employees, whether it's making sure that you have the right resources available to be able to provide the appropriate services to your residents, or whether it's looking at how to you know, continue to improve the lives of other individuals and the seniors that we serve. But asking yourself and your organization, do we have the appropriate scale and resources to compete is one of the first steps. And then once you've determined whether you have that right scale or what is the right scale that you need, you know, then asking yourself what are the approaches to growth and change that we as an organization are comfortable undertaking. You know, some may be comfortable looking at new campus development, others looking at growing into home and community-based services. You know, are you interested in acquisition and affiliation? And if you are, are you wanting to be proactive and actively seek other organizations? Or are you gonna be more responsive and respond to opportunities as they may come to you, but that you're not necessarily going to grow out and look at those? You know, are you willing to partner or joint venture with organizations, or are you wanting to undertake any new effort uh, individually on your own? What about divestiture? Are all of the current business lines and assets that you have in place? You heard the story about Grace um, Presbyterian Village and the divestiture. PMMA has gone through some divestiture. So, you know, as an organization to be able to grow, do you need to look at divesting some of your assets? What is the right pace of growth and change? You know, some organizations are willing to undertake three to four strategic initiatives concurrently, while others say, you know, that is way too much effort for our organization and that for us to be able to make a change, we're only going to take one sequentially and then move at the other. So, 
Being able to sit down as an organization and say, what is that right pace of growth can then help you determine how do you help prioritize based upon the manpower, the time, and the resources that you have, the different initiatives and opportunities. You know, what is your tolerance for risk? Are you a risk seeker? Are you risk neutral? Or are you risk adverse? And so, again, as you look at different opportunities, knowing what your organization's tolerance for risk will help you to be able to filter and prioritize various opportunities as they come available. What resources are available to invest in growth? You know, for many organizations, you've set aside growth funds. Those growth funds may have five, 10, 15 million dollars of capital. Others, you may not have yet done that, but you're looking to say, you know, how do we go ahead and start to, we want to look at either a satellite campus, or maybe we want to look at some affiliation or acquisition opportunities. So how much funds are we able to risk for some of these growth and other initiatives while still protecting the core assets of the organization? And then once you've determined how much funds are set aside, what are the appropriate returns? Are you going to look at this despite being a not-for-profit on more of like a for-profit investment? So is there a certain return on cost that you're looking to generate based upon those funds that you invest? You know, and so as an organization, what is the you know, filter and metric that you're going to use to look at that? You know, we have to ask just because the last year, you know, that we did not see necessarily the COVID-19 pandemic coming. However, we have seen other types of pandemics and you know, other types of infectious events. So how do we prepare for the next pandemic? You know, do we have all the right procedures and policies in place? Have we thought through how we would address the next item? Is our product program branding, pricing and value aligned to our market in this dynamic environment? We talked a lot about some of the value of the strategic pricing initiatives. So you know, do we need to revisit some of our pricing or other different programs? And then other key questions, you know, can we meet all of our promises that we make to our residents and how? You know, are we innovative? What is our core competency? And then what do we see as the greatest threats to our future viability? So as you look at revisiting your current strategic plans, perhaps re-engaging or restarting the strategic plans that you may have been put on hold, these are just some of the questions that we've found to be valuable as you look at uh, working with your boards and leadership teams to help evaluate is there adjustments that need to be made to the plans that we currently have in place. But the one thing that I would say, and that we've talked to on a number of occasions, that the demographic and the market opportunity continues to remain strong. We're going to see that the senior population base doubles over the course of the next 20 years, that you need to be bold but not foolish. Again, as not-for-profit providers, part of our goal is to help to continue to set aside you know, what is our charitable purpose and charitable mission. And part of that mission is continuing to be able to expand the number of individuals that you serve as an organization. So make sure that as your organization that you're looking at how do we grow the services that we're providing to individuals, but not doing that foolishly or without thought. And then, as was talked about just on some of the decisiveness and others, that as a whole, not-for-profit organizations have historically been more risk adverse, but that for a number of these opportunities that are out there, that you need to act timely and decisively. So with that, we're going to close the Greystone event for 2021. We appreciate everyone coming and taking the time out of your schedules. We know that for a number of you that this was your first trip and to a corporate business event or some of a conference function. So we again really appreciate and want to thank all of you for taking the time and opportunity and spending the course of the last couple of days with us. Uh, we will be hosting the Greystone event again next year in 2022 at the end of June. But before we end, we'd like to provide a special thanks to some of the Greystone individuals that helped make the Greystone event possible. So with that, we'd like to recognize Tori Moore, Cindy Smith, Emily Klaus, Rosa Ramirez, Amanda Carroll, Chris Cook, and Caitlin Stevens. So thank you all for helping to make this such a great success. We have lunch that will be, for those of you that uh, don't have flights that you need to catch, lunch will be served down in the pavilion. And uh, for those of you who have afternoon activities, the afternoon activities will continue as well. So thank you again for coming to the event this year.